Yeah, I'm ready. I think that's how it goes. It depends on the the intro. Are the intro and the outro different slightly? They are. They're very different. That's what I thought. So. I, I composed them all myself. <laughs> no, seriously, is that is that like from iTunes or iMovie? Is that iMovie canned music? It is or not, it's not you... canned. It's um, Audio Jungle. Oh, you that's right. Them? You mentioned you mentioned yeah. them. So, anyway, welcome to DTLT today. Um, We're talking about our theme. Welcome to the jungle. <laughs> not for today, but our theme music for our intros and our right. outros. So it's a very catchy tune. <laughs> <laughs> I walk around the house humming it all the, the time. <laughs> It's reached your conscience. It is yeah. bathrobe it has. and it's, white it's, What do they call those ear earworms? And your bunny ears. <laughs> your white bathrobe, your white bathroom slippers, <laughs> and your fluffy bunny Have you been ears. spying on me in the <laughs> Watching through the window. Aiden, hey, go back to your room. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's why you think of the this bunny up. <laughs> this isn't anything you should see, son. Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all for today. <laughs> On that note. It's good to see you. <laughs> oh, oh, the man. Cold so anyway. extra cuddly today. <laughs> um, DTLT wow. has an awesome opportunity. We're actually getting to develop two courses for the spring semester. We're going to be running them out of the American Studies program at University of Mary Washington. And it's really cool because we get a lot of free reign with this. Um, you know, they, they said, it's of course, it's got to tie back to American culture in some way. They said that it doesn't even have to celebrate it. Uh, you could totally, <laughs> you can destroy, you could totally destroy uh, America, but it's got to involve America in some way. But other than that, and of course, since it's going through DTLT, we're going to be doing something in relation to digital media and digital culture. Uh, mm -hmm. And so we had a cool opportunity today. We said, you know, we were breaking out the whiteboard after we met with them and said, let's start thinking of what kind of courses that we want to do. And so, Andy, I think you were the one that mentioned, are we going to throw this up live? And I said, that's a perfect idea. Let's put it up online. Let's do a live stream and have people contribute for us. And we had quite, I think, four or five people show up and start talking to us and uh, giving us a lot of ideas. Yeah. Doing the crowdsourcing. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so and one will... of them was Jason Green, who's in the chat now. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Jason. Thank you again, so, Jason. Um, but... I mean, first off, that's an awesome idea and a cool opportunity for us that we can just fire up this camera, tweet out to our network and say, here's what we're working on, come work with us, and that people will actually take time out of their jobs and <laughs> to jump in there and actually right. help us do ours. Every, yeah, everybody take a break and help us, give yeah. us the ideas that we can't come up <laughs> with on our own. Yeah. Exactly. Thanks again. Is, I think it's a perfect model. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Except, although we, so. you know, really, we got some good ideas. No, we really Let's did. talk about Jason Green's first. Jason Green recommended this idea of crowd and content, mm -hmm. the new decentralized American narrative. And I love that as a kind of overarching theme for a class. Mm -hmm. You know, thinking about things like Wikipedia, um, the question of how content's created, um, and you could even link in the idea of crowdsourcing, you know, anything from software development to something like Wikipedia or mm -hmm. content. I mean... There's a lot there, and it really does capture or put its finger on the pulse of the changing nature of production and right. labor. Talk about crowdsourcing, like, you know, hey, help us, and people help you. Mm -hmm. Hey, put up a Wikipedia, an article, and people do. Well, like, I, no one's paying mm -hmm. them. It brings up all questions of labor and all this other interesting stuff. Well, we, we joke about people doing our job or, you know, cheating or whatever you want to call it, but, yeah. I mean... If, if you want to call it that, DS-106 was a whole bunch of people kind of coming in, and we were stealing their ideas, if you will. Yeah. But it made for a richer course. It made for a better experience all the way around. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. you know, and stealing is kind of a, a, a main subject of some of the courses that were thrown out there in terms of <laughs> Pirates and and remix and yeah, Jim. And that talk sort of about thing. your pirates and zombies because I know you're dying too. Because I yeah, that was going to be <laughs> a course. Would you like me to? I'd, and I've I would got, love I've you got too. the whiteboard here, so I'll show people what we were working on, so they can get an overview yeah. of all of this. But talk about that. Well, my pirates and zombies course was a course I proposed in 2008, 2009, for a freshman seminar, and the general idea, and I it was probably even more more kind of straight laced when I proposed it then, and. What I propose is to study the history of pirates around the era of, you know, reading narratives from about 
1715 to 1720 and thereabouts. And looking at the mo that moment in piracy and the way in which it was cracked down on brutally, I mean, the idea that you had these the, the British uh, Navy, uh, the colonial, uh, didn't have a Navy, so really the British were, the American Navy doesn't come until about 1796. So what you basically have is these kind of European navies breaking down on pirates in major ways, in draconian ways. And I think that, like, 15 to 20 years of the what they call the a golden era of piracy versus our 20 years of piracy on the Internet hmm. would be an interesting kind of side-by-side -side comparison historically, but also very interesting to think about all the different forms of piracy and the kind of, you know, the cultural valuation of that word over time. And then also look about that, like pirates being one of the great memes right now, looking about that in comparison to another great meme right now, zombie, and the idea of consumerism and the way the zombie's been placed. And I don't know, just thinking through these two kind of cultural metaphors for American culture um, and beyond and think about what they might mean and to kind of dismantle them. And, you know, zombie stuff is fun because it links us back to slavery, Haiti, um, also the colonial period. So you can look at these two colonial periods together in tandem and then work them up towards the uh, contemporary moment. That's a t class I'd want to teach, um, but this is going to be a teaching, a joint effort. So uh, we have to come up with something we're all comfortable with. And I have a feeling that Tim, Andy, and Martha would be like, well, you know, it's great for you little zombies and pirates. <laughs> but, it's, uh, a course, <laughs> it's a course I would take, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I, would, I would like to find out more about what your well, ideas are about Well, that. I didn't sell you on it right there, because then I'm depressed. If, if no, you, you totally sold. sold me. It's just I, I don't know if I would teach it or, you know, be on that that end of it. That's well, we have talked about another class we would think about teaching. Let's talk a bit about that. What about that history of the documentary class? Mm. That's something that fascinates me. Um, and, and I also, what I do kind of like about this is the idea of students as documentarians. Um, and there are lots of good examples. And there's, there's one that I link to famously kind of on my, on my video blog is, is the um, the student documentary about comedians and where they are in terms of dissent. Yeah. Um, and there's lots of examples of, about that, but they talk about people like, um, you know, George Carlin, John Stewart kind of in the contemporary, and uh, I'm blanking on his name, um, Lenny Bruce sure. um, back, famous, in, right. back in the 50s, and he was kind of one of the originals um, when, it, when it came to dissent and, and certainly got in, into big trouble. And, um, so that's a that's a neat documentary that 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 kind of encapsulates where I'd want students to kind of investigate this and go forward with it. Um, but you know that doesn't start doesn't start or end there. But um, that is a good example of of kind of that student level of of documentary that where it's just a little bit of polish here and there. And this you know this kind of competes with some of the yeah. the great documentaries that are out there. Um, but but there's lots of examples of that. Well, that it's we interesting because the history of the documentary, like you're saying. We could study the history of documentary in the U.S., which does have a history there, and, mm -hmm. and then do that one day of the week, and the other day have a kind of like lab where they're working right. on particular elements and thinking about what are the cinematic mm -hmm. elements, what are the kind of approaches, methodologies for this kind of documentary. Train the students to do it in week, every week, and then by the end of like 10 weeks, you're like, okay, the next five weeks you make a small mini documentary. Mm -hmm. What's nice, too, is it ties in with themes. Like you're saying, another theme that... Todd Conway threw out is Descent in America, mm -hmm. which is a different class, but that would work perfectly because the documentary class can encompass everything. Sure. They can come up with a theme mm -hmm. and you don't have to dictate it. And as Jason Green says also, you know, don't forget news um, and where that kind of fits into the, to the American studies and where, where the news yeah. and news media are in, in today's world. Um, Absolutely. <clears throat> It, the, the only, the one, the thing that I wonder about in terms of going back to the history of the documentary, I, I wonder, um, how much of that becomes a film course, and whether we whether we want it to be a film course, talking about you know scenes and shots, filming, et cetera, technique, um, or does it really kind of get at the study of 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 the history? You know what I mean? Um, how much how you balance that? Well, I think you could use so your homework is to watch. Here's my idea with that. Your homework would to be watch a film. This is the film we're watching. Get it on Netflix come in on one day ready to discuss the historical approaches, you know, use that hour-long lecture or whatever to talk about elements of it, mm -hmm. and then say, okay, 
lab on Thursday, say that's on Tuesday, on Thursday is everyone bring that thing, break up into like six groups and shoot it. Shoot an element of that film that you thought was interesting, taking uh -huh. their approach on any topic you want. Sure. And every week do that. So I think you can kind of really balance both the theory and the, and the actual practice. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, you know what? You approach the idea of them learning it differently yeah. than through a paper. You know, and, and we, we talked a little bit about this, or this, was thrown, this idea was thrown out in, in the previous session where we were brainstorming, this idea of, you know, creating a product mm -hmm. or creating something that, that you're kind of giving back. Um, and and when, you, when you talk about that, I, I think of, you know, maybe, maybe taking documentaries from different, um, almost academic disciplines, if you want to call them that, but, yeah. but taking one from economics, taking one from, from history, taking one from sociology or something like that. And you could build up this documentary that kind of documents the segments of, of what makes up our society and kind of the best practices, best approaches that, that, are, that come from that. Um, and, and we could have a really fun class where this would mash <laughs> up again with the remix culture that Tim suggested, mm -hmm. a complete archive.org based mm -hmm. instructional technology documentary film, right, where you look at the instructional films on archive.org and remix them. Yeah. And you look at them over time. But that could be just one small section of the history of the documentary class. What I like mm -hmm. is that all of these bleed a little bit. They do. They yeah. all kind of have... I mean, it's it's clear that from everything that we've talked about, one of the two courses, and or if not both of them, in some way, will probably have elements of talking about piracy and talking about mm. copyright, talking about the elements of a remix and how one work ties into someone else's work. Mm. I mean, that comes yeah. very clearly when you talk about doing film and documentary work, is how do you learn from others and that kind of thing. That's and right. then with the remix stuff and piracy. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't say you know, students should get their films from BitTorrent as opposed to Netflix. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, frankly, with the Library of Congress rule, it's, you know, we could make a case for them breaking DVDs and remixing them. Where it gets tricky is when we ask them to publish it online. Mm -hmm. And when you go through YouTube, you have that extra buffer of, hey, YouTube asked you to bring it down before you get uh, mm -hmm. a cease and desist mm -hmm. or something even more. But, I mean, that's the, always the question you raise. We've had that again and again with DS-106. Right. And, right. you know, I don't really want to be in the situation of saying break the law, but I do want to be in the situation of saying consider it. Sure. You know, consider what you're being asked to do right now. And what's interesting about it, since we're talking about the spring semester and we've got a little bit of time to flesh out the idea of what the course <laughs> is going to become, and what will pass from now until that time is that we'll probably have our own media server where we won't be relying on third parties <laughs> to host that's, the videos. So yeah. if we really want to descend, if we really want to go down that rabbit hole, we'll probably have a system in place where we can host the students' videos and put it out there without any issue. And a part of me really likes that, Yeah, frankly. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, Jason brings up, is the documentary would be, the project must be about how to make a documentary, right? <laughs> the meta. It's very meta. Death, right? <laughs> I mean, it would be funny to kind of, you know, talk about using a class to build a frame mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. like, to come up with uh, films and examples of films and et cetera and, you know, use those chapters with the students' examples and with their considerations of that chapter mm -hmm. to start writing and framing a kind of resource that goes beyond the class. I like that. I mean, I'm excited about that. Some of the other ideas, <coughs> though, that were fun, history of open source. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm fascinated by that. You know, it is kind of more of a straight history, but, I mean, I'm fascinated by the idea of kind of sitting down and, you know, thinking about the cultural history of open source and what it might mean. Do we mention Drupal? Do we even go, you know? To no, we'll, we'll, it will be dominated by WordPress. We could even have, like, you know, here's a really <laughs> good open source application to play with. What would be great with that course is if we could have the students contributing to open source projects while the course is going on and yeah. showing that mm. it's not necessarily about being a programmer to contribute to a project like that. It's about writing documentation. It's That's about right. designing designing some of the work around it. You know, there's there are elements of the community can that, that can come involved with it without being, you know, a coder. Right. Yeah. You know, and that would be something I think we could start to marry with, you know, teaching theme development, teaching mm -hmm. plugin development on basic levels. Not in this class, but I think it gives way to something that could happen later on. The Remix Culture class, let's talk about that for a second. Well, it's another one. Remix Culture, Digital Identity, those were all sort of melding together. Again, it's all bleeding, but 
uh, the remix culture came from the Kirby Ferguson videos. Right. We were thinking about everything as a remix, and he's been doing several parts to that and really researching the idea behind that everything is based off of something else and no work is 100 percent unique it's all inspired by previous works and you've seen it more and more now with the mashups on youtube and everything is that you know people girl talk i mean the music that's created there is clearly yeah. it's it's unique in and of itself but only because it was able to build off of previous work right so um, I think that would be wild to have a course where we talk about that, talk about the remix culture, uh, and have them creating their own mashups while well, they're doing it. Andy, you brought up this idea, and I really like what you're saying, uh, Tim. And we have to talk to Martha. So all this is caveat on talking to Martha, who's going to be another voice in this discussion. Um, but you said hacking American studies, Andy, right? And to <coughs> me, I really like what you're saying there, and I'll let you flesh it out. I don't want to, but like. So many of the things we're talking about, maybe save the history of the documentary class, which seems very pointed and a special topic. Mm -hmm. Maybe everything like Descent in America, hacker culture, remix culture, digital identity, um, open source, and the, the decentralized na American narrative of crowd and content could be framed under a course, American Studies 202, called Hacking American Studies, or yeah. something they're about. Exactly. And these make up key elements mm -hmm of what we talk about over the 15 weeks. Yeah, and I, you know, it's not necessarily up, up to me to flesh this out. It's, it's, it's for you people out there. You're supposed to help, yeah. help us flesh this out. <laughs> yeah, so you really don't want to do anything. No, I don't, want to, I don't want to do any fleshing. No, <laughs> and, I don't, I don't, and actually I don't know if I have really any, any strong ideas about this. This, this actually came up um, with just looking at the Hacking the Academy um, mm -hmm. book that you and Jeff have been associated with and, and other people are, are, are kind of involved in this this again getting back to the idea of, of crowdsourcing um, you know crowdsourcing the idea of of American studies and 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 taking little snippets of different people's ideas about what it is to study America and American culture um, and putting that all together so you could instead of each one of these being you know the title of a course, it's actually more of a chapter in a course that right. is hacking American studies. So we do, a, you know, a, a, a chapter on the remix culture. We do a chapter on internet fame, um, do a yeah. chapter on digital identity and that sort of thing. And, and, and all of that kind of brings in the idea of, of hacking it. And then we bring in open source materials, um, open source tools to, to kind of uh, publish that, you know, flesh it out, I guess, to start with, but then to publish that stuff introduce the audio and video in terms of the media and, and build, you know, kind of a rich resource um, that's hacked together. Here's an interesting idea, too. Um, tell me what you think about it, because just talking about it, right? So when I was in graduate school, a lot of the time I took was t reading American Studies theory. So okay. the American Studies kind of uh, curriculum that was based on all the major thinkers in that and their kind of idea of problematizing this idea of America. I mean, that was mainly the, the gist of that um, discipline. And why you're saying is to open up hacking that on different things. Mm -hmm. With what we're doing here with DTLT today and what we're doing with all this technology and stuff, what if we went out and we contacted some of these thinkers who are in the academy, mm -hmm. who are doing this stuff right now in classes, and say, hey, look, you know, we have these topics we want to cover. I mean, it would take some time. And we know you're a major person in this field. You don't have to leave your office. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. We just want you to talk about this topic for an hour, if you want, for a class that's open and you're giving back to, and that we have them talk for an hour, you know, live or whatever, or do something. Mm -hmm. Be, you don't know how much invested they are. But then around that, we build another lab space where we're building something around that, that we work with them on the actual kind of like production side. So see if we can get scholars from around the field, or some, and they don't only have to be PhD scholars, they can be maker culture people out there, they sure. can be from whatever part, but bring them in and do that. Now that's kind of like the change MOOC that's happening right now, mm. a little bit. I'm just interested in how much, you know, we might be able to bring other people in. Yeah, but the thing about the change MOOC voice. is the change MOOC is all, you know, it's intellectuals, it's big people in the field, 
But the kind of stuff we're talking about, it doesn't necessarily... I mean, we could have a chapter on internet fame, and we could try and get a YouTube star to talk to them for an <laughs> sure, hour. Absolutely. About how they decided to break the system and how they were able to put out YouTube videos and become famous, and now how they're might be making six figures without going through mainstream media. I mean, how wild would that be? Hmm. Yeah, fascinating. So, I like that. Yeah. I mean, do you know what I mean? Like, we could be yeah. producing this class. Right. <laughs> like, think about the cl idea of the class as us producers of it. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily only have to be the sole actors, because that's so how much how we think of classes in the academy. Is your idea, like, that's why I like this experience. I'm so used to, like, doing a class and dreaming up the syllabus and doing it, right? Mm -hmm. But this isn't it. What if we come to it and say, like, we have a different set of skills here. And with the network possibilities, we don't need to know everything about every topic. What we need to do is have the ease and the possibility of bringing those people in who are cool enough to do it for free mm -hmm. and actually, <laughs> you know, do it. Now, the whole free thing is another question, but, you know, what we're making on it is nominal in terms well, of I mean, teaching. Well, I mean, hopefully the people that we get are cool enough to realize that we're experimenting in, in this and we'll would be happily be a part of it. Yeah. You know, anybody who wants to go corporate on us, you know, we don't need you. So. Yeah, that's right. We're running out of time, but I think we've covered a lot of ground here. And definitely stay tuned for what's coming out of Mary Washington because we're about to blow everybody's minds. <laughs> Blowing the house down. <laughs> Thanks for watching DTLT today, and we'll see you all next time. Take care, guys. So long. Thank you.